me? Or, or were you live? Hey, everybody. It's uh, that's the same time, same channel, I think. <laughs> Hopefully. It's me, uh, John. And uh, today on stream is going to be... Sean. Yeah. Sean, tell everybody what you're working on today. Today, I'm, going, I'm not painting. I'm going to be building. So today, uh, I have two main things I'm going to be building. I'm working on these gladiator figures. I'm doing some for somebody. And I'm also going to be putting together this this little twerp, uh, the cave shaman from One Importance. Yeah. yeah. What's what's his name? His name is Nazgar Stingwallet. Noise. So um, I'm going to be putting together, you know, cleaning the. Luckily, most of these these metal models are one piece. They're just a matter of cleaning. So uh, if anyone has any questions about cleaning metal models, uh, they always have more problems that I've always had metal more problems with metal than plastic that's for sure yeah uh, and I will be working on magnetizing these gosh darn knights uh, behind Sean <laughs> and so when you hear the occasional swearing don't be alarmed that's me probably reversing a polarity on something that didn't need to be reversed uh, so yeah come join us won't you uh, on this fun exciting day of stuff so uh, just to show you one of the completed guys but these are all Crusader miniatures. Uh, it's a whole line of of uh, gladiators, like pretty much every type that existed. You got here is good old, uh, I think it's a Secutor, uh, Retiaris with his uh, trident and net. Here's a uh, provocateur. What does a provocateur do? Uh, he was a challenger. Okay. He. he Typically, Makes sense. Well, Seems like that's well, in his name. Well, because what happens is you, they were kind of like one of the prime time fights Ooh. for the um, uh, gladiators, and usually they would fight each other. Okay, so, so provocador so, on provocador action. Right. Whereas, like, uh, you, like typically you'd have the Retiaris guy with the net versus a Secutor. Secutor means chaser. Okay. So his job was to chase after the little guy with the net, and uh, you know that was considered a uh, nice even fight, despite the fact you'll. Know, one guy is heavily armored with a shield and a, and, and a sword. The other guy has a net and a trident. Yeah. Weirdly, and weirdly enough, the you'd think it would be a little in favor of the heavy armored guy, but it was apparently it was much more often that the the uh, the Retiaris would win. Interesting. Because all he, all he really had to do was just uh, just stay out of reach of the guy with the sword until he dropped from exhaustion. Gotcha. Because he's wearing this gigantic helmet. Look at this thing. Nice. He's heavily armored. He's wearing a helmet. This is Italy we're remembering here. <laughs> so a nice and uh, cool temperate climate. Right. Is what Italy's known for, right? Right. Known for its uh, fine winters. So I guess uh, I could show you part of my, uh, my methodology for cleaning here. So, I've gotten rid of the most, the major kind of flash lines and burrs and stuff. Especially got uh, smoothed out the uh, the base here. These guys are actually gonna be mounted on washers. Nice and simple. Yeah. Do they? Um, so those models you're working on, do they come with bases or anything like that? No. Okay, most so. cru most Crusader figures don't come with bases because they're kind of you know they're generic. You can fit them into any game. Yeah. So uh, these just come. You know these the uh, person I'm painting them for. Uh, uh, Give me washers for them. So, oh, cool. Here's well, here's a finished guy, all mounted and cleaned up, ready to go. So, uh, so uh, back to my uh, methodology. So I've gotten rid of all the major burrs and mold lines. Now I'm just kind of looking for. I got, well, I got rid of all the flash. Now I'm looking for mold lines. Uh, and on metal figures, sometimes the mold lines are insurmountable, which is another reason I don't like metal models. Yes. On a, on a nice re resin models, as long as it's as long as it's not like a deep fissure or across the face or something, it's pretty easy to clean up or at least hide with the paint. Uh, plastic, same thing. Metal, you know, once you've uh, once you've got it on that, once it goes through a detail, there's not much you can do other than uh, you know uh, file it and hope for the best. Gotcha. So. Yeah, okay. I mean, so I predominantly got my start with War Machine and Hordes, and uh, mm. 
they they had the tagline of what Full Metal Fantasy. It was metal at the time, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so every single kit was a metal kit, and luckily I was young enough and experienced enough to where mold lines were not even a consideration. <laughs> um, but yeah, it, it's definitely a big thing with metal models. Um, and mold lines are created uh, basically when they are producing the model. The two molds will be pressed together, but it's not always 100% in terms of its coverage. So there'll be a little bit of metal or plastic or whatever seeping into that, that division between two molds, yep. creating a little bit of a line. Um, it's not the worst thing in the world, um, but it definitely, when you're trying to take something tiny and give it the illusion of it being just a miniature version of what it would be in real life, those mold lines make it very apparent of, um, make it very apparent that it is not what it is intended to be. Does that make sense, my, my... Yeah, yeah, I got you. So, so I just, you know, so I've, I've, I've so uh, I was using the back of the knife to get the, like, the larger, more obvious mold lines. Which, really, again, really works well on plastic and resin, a little harder on metal, which is why I've broken out the files. So this is a, uh, it's kind of like a, uh, kind of a flat oval file, which is good. I also have a, just straight flat one. And that's the best way I've found to, you know, to get rid of mold lines. So I'm kind of running along the mold line, running up, running right up this guy's arm, you know, in the exact wrong way you want it to. <laughs> And luckily, the mold line goes up through his hair, which means it disappears. It misses his face, luckily. So, luckily, this guy was pretty clean. Oh, there's okay. Yeah, I say that, then I find a mold line. <laughs> but still. Uh, as, as that is to happen. Well, uh, at least I found it now instead of, you know, a couple hours from now when, it, when I put the primer on it. Oh, yeah, man. That's, so, not only is... It, so sometimes that's one of the reasons why I've moved over to the Xenothal priming, like the, the priming with two different colors, is because a lot of times when I'm applying pure black, I can't see the mold lines until I start putting paint on it to yeah. lighten it up. And boy, is that a terrible feeling. Yeah, well, worse it is somehow a uh, you know, random burr or a mold line escapes your notice until you're like putting on the, the dry brush. Yeah. It's so, like I put the base coat, I've done washes, and then the, the dry brush picks up this burr sticking out and you know there's nothing you do you gotta cut it off and then fix everything yeah but and which, I've been doing um, a lot of fixing with my models now with like so I'll scrape and file down where I goofed up and then I'll reprime and so I've been investing in paint on primers a lot because I feel like just painting over it especially if it's a metal model it's just going to cause the paint to chip off later, anyways. Oh yeah, yeah. I always, I always reprime if I can. Though, of course, depending on uh, how many layers have been on previously, that prime might be prohibited. Right. So. Yeah. So sometimes you just got to work with what you got, but. Okay, this guy. Aim for the best. So this guy's clean. So I just put him aside. Usually, what I'll do is I'll, I'll do a batch and then glue all at once. So. Also avoids me having to open and close the, the glue bottle too many times. Yeah. So that was a, this right here is a Retiaris, the good old Trident and uh, uh, net guy. So uh, just as a personal note, a little bit into uh, the life of Sean Twitty, <laughs> did you know um, all about the history and what these guys were called before even taking on this project? Yes. <laughs> Good. So solid, simple. Yes. No. Um, no. The uh, yeah. I, I mean, really into ancient history. So especially this kind of weird stuff. So. Uh, well, this isn't weird stuff. This is like awesome stuff. It's the. Uh, but yeah. The, gladiators. Actually, uh, this was a this this was actually brought up as a subject to one of my one of my classes I teach because we did we, did, we were doing um, uh, ancient artifacts and. And some of those ancient artifacts that we had as samples were like uh, reproductions of like Roman oil lamps, and the Romans liked to decorate their uh, their chotskis with uh, like gladiators and stuff. Okay. So you'd have like a you know you'd have like a secutor uh, or a provocator or something, kind of a uh, you know 
standing majestically on your oil lamp. So would it be fashioned after one particular one, or would it be like just a, I like gladiators, and this is my gladiator lamp? Uh, it seemed to be you know pretty generic, <clears throat> but there were, in history, there actually were famous gladiators who had merchandise made of them. You could buy like little statues. It always makes me think of Hercules, the Disney movie. Sure. <clears throat> uh, the the little uh, musical number where Hercules gets all of his merchandise. Yeah, I mean, you know, a, a, <clears throat> a gladiator who it, it was really successful, he was famous. He was, you know, the crowds would come to see him. And if he got good enough, he could retire. But would, would he want to? Yeah, well, <clears throat> excuse me. I remember um, we're talking a little bit about that before the stream began. Yeah, there was a, there was a couple of gladiators who... Uh, you know, when, when you got to get famous enough, eventually you might be offered your freedom, which you which would come in the form of a wooden sword, which would be kind of like your, your your pink slip. And more than a few gladiators went, nope, I, I want to stay here. Yeah. Love you know, the, the fame and the... The fame, not really the fortune per se, but uh, certainly... Uh, well, I'm sure they had a lot of, like, actual favor and things like that to... Well, sure, but, you know, for the most part, they weren't paid. Uh, <laughs> oh, really? Like most, so, most well, most gladiators were slaves. Okay, I wasn't sure if like so in terms of like slaves and things like that was like living expenses and all that. Like, did they not have to worry about like finding food and and drink and shelter and all that? No, well, I mean, a proper gladiator was a, an investment. You know, you'd you'd have a you know you'd train him, you'd feed him well. He'd actually you know he got great food because he had because he was a star athlete. Yeah. So yeah, that's so, a, so yeah, that's why you can imagine some people stayed because at the end of the day, it's uh, you know, fame, fortune, life. yeah, a pretty cush life. That's yeah. interesting. But uh, you know, cush life if you don't consider the fact he every few days he has to go out there and get risk getting killed. And we were that was another thing we were talking about before the stream began. It's your your actual like risk to your safety in life was not nearly as bad as it was depicted in the movies, correct? Oh, not even close. It, uh, like I said, a, uh, a gladiator was an investment. His, his, his team, his, uh, his, his school, his owners, well, they didn't want him killed you, because that's the equivalent of hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars investment into this guy. And, uh, you know, so you, you know, you'd have lo there's lots of actual depictions in the art of you know, there's a there's a fight going on, and you know, one guy has a little slash on his arm, and he's and he's raising the finger of, hey, you know, I give up, it's it, it's over, and that's the end of the fight. The old, uh, you know, the old image of the guy on the ground, and he raises his hand to the emperor, and the emperor, you know, gives him the thumbs down. It's like, he, no, he dies. That that didn't really happen. Yeah. It, or if it did, it was because the emperor had personally paid for all those slaves, so he can, you know. So as, so as the Ludus, the school was like, okay, well, I guess we'll buy some more later. But yeah, like, you know, most movies you have it are like, there's no way you could have a, you could have the uh, the games go on if you had that level of uh, blood death. Check. That level of death. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's lots of bloodshed. That's why the, that's why the, the gladiator uh, clothes, like, leave so much skin exposed. So that, you know, little slashes and stabs show. You know, the guys, the, the people in the cheap seats need to be able to see. Terrifying to think about. Yeah, it's, it's pretty horrible. So, if you were a gladiator, what position would you want? I would like to be. <laughs> I would like to maybe a Sagittarius. And and what what would be your role as a Sagittarius? This is a Sagittarius. They were so named because they were the archers. Okay. They have typical, typical. As far as I can tell, the typical match for them was they would ride on a horse, and shoot at other gladiators from horseback. Seems like a nice life. Well, it means that uh, only if you're really unlucky do they actually catch you. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, uh, they were, if it's like the Sagittarius were actually named for, uh, famed for their archery skills. So you wouldn't always do fights. You would, uh, you know, you would shoot at targets and okay. you do trick shots, that kind of thing. So you might not actually fight. So, you know, it's not all gladiators necessarily fought things. 
There's also a type of gladiator who's technically more of an official. He's called the Charon. So he, what, what is the role of the Charon as his, an official? Well, he, w- he would do, typically wear a mask, and, his, and he would carry a big mallet. Okay. His job was to walk around after fights and finish off dying fighters with the mallet. Oh, man. <laughs> he, and that's why he was hit. That's why he was called the Charon. He, yeah. He, he uh, carried them over to the afterlife. <laughs> oh, wow. With a big mallet. That's, uh, um, so in, like, modern day equivalent, would they be, like, so, I, I mean, I imagine them having, like, masks to cover their face so no one knows who the Charon is, but... But maybe Rome doesn't care about that? Ancient Rome doesn't care about that as well, much? Yeah, the mask wasn't ahead of his identity so much as that it was to make him look like look like a, a god. Yeah. He had he had you know, he he looked like Charon. <laughs> he, he would look like the uh, the fairy man. Yeah. Right, so I mean I mean, you know, the modern executioner wears a hood because you know, he fears reprisal, but there's no reprisal if you're killing people in the arena. Right. Scary stuff. Yeah, well, ancient Rome. Good, was, good old Greece. No, no. Or Rome. Rome. Excuse me. This guy right here is a velet or veleti. Um, he doesn't have in his right hand. He should have a little javelin because he was kind of like lightly armed, and he's. Uh, I think he's dressed like a German, which is why he's got the uh, like wolf skin. So does he park other people's chariots for them? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> no, <it's> velet. <laughs> <laughs> no, the uh, there was all sorts of. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've done the research before on these guys, so it's like, oh yeah. <laughs> uh, the guy I'm doing this for, he came to the right person. <laughs> yeah. But the. Uh, D- but did the, he know what he was getting into when he asked you to uh, paint gladiators for him? Yes. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> no, the. Uh, but the, like I said, Crusader Miniatures makes these guys, and there's almost no doubles. There's like, there's 45 casts I have, and only five of them. I guess there's only like five recasts. Everything else are just unique because there's so much variety. That's awesome. Yeah. So that makes it uh, it's fun for me as a painter so I don't have to paint the same guy again. Any questions so far? Uh, no, we just have people watching which is great. Uh, if anyone has any has any uh, like problems they've encountered with cleaning metal models, let me know. But yeah. The Crusader, the, up. the Crusader figures actually tend to be pretty good casts, so that's good. Yeah. I mean, there's the usual mold lines, but nothing egregious. Well, that's good. I just need a better, I need a thinner. Oh yeah, here, right here is one of the refs. Just a guy with a stick. <laughs> good old guy with stick. Well, that's another thing. In the movies, you never see the refs. But so what would the refs do? I mean, their job they... is to make sure everyone's fighting fair and everyone, uh, and you know, when 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 one of the uh, if anyone calls for mercy, he's the one who stops the fight. Because, you know, like I said, they didn't fight to the death. Very yeah. very rarely did they fight to the death, but, you know, they fight till one of them was hurt, and then if he if he has the choice, he goes, hey, uh, he holds up his finger like this, and the ref comes over and stops the fight. Usually Seems, what happens. Uh... Now, sometimes, of course, I mean, you know, you've got sharp implements. People yeah. die in the middle of it, either by accident or because they just wouldn't give up. And you know, oh well, that's that, that's what happens. So is there was a penalty to not killing the refs? Well, he's well. For one thing, the ref is probably a free citizen, and he's he has power over you. So yeah, that would probably be there would probably be lots of problems with that. Yeah. Also, of course, it would be like really dishonorable because you know he's not the combatant. Yeah. No, no killing the refs. Yeah, bribing, even the, even bribing the, maybe. Uh, I'm sure there's bribery everywhere. Oh yeah, it's ancient Rome. What, what would ancient Rome be without bribery? It's like look the other way while I stab this guy. Okay. And if you like, insist. Do you like the second row football? Yeah, I didn't see it. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> well, I didn't see or, you know, or in wrestling, he's got an illegal object. <laughs> Go up and pull out one of the stone chairs. Hit someone with it, right? Right. He's got an ancient oh. wrench. <laughs> I wonder if there was penalty boxes. Like, mm. like a hockey. No. I mean, the trouble is, you know, other than the refs, it was pretty no-holds-barred. Uh, 
Sean, we're getting a question from Daniel asking what game this is going to be used for. I don't know what game this is. Theoretically, because these are kind of generically, um, uh, you know, generic models, you'd probably use those for a jugula. Uh, I wonder if, you know, I don't think they're going to be, they're planned to be used for like uh, Gangs of Rome, but theoretically you could use them in Gangs of Rome. Yeah. Uh, you could use them in Saga if you wanted to do like a whole crusade, uh, gladiator army, that might be interesting. Uh, you know. There's a couple different, you know, gladiator type games. Man, so with magnetizing these, they always fit until I actually glue them into place. And then something is I mean, I think it's just the glue itself, like it takes up space. These guys come on washers, so easy peasy. Would you also add in lemon squeezy? Uh, no. no. And you said you have 45 to do? Yeah, and I finished 13 and another, like, five are partially done. And, you know, they have a variety of complexity. I mean... Some of them are pretty easy because it's just a guy in a tunic with a spear, because he's one of the light guys. And then you have like, then you have the like a Mermelon who's head to toe armor, shield, and everything. Did you say Mermelon? Mermelon. What is the difference between a Mermelon and a Myrmidon? A Myrmidon is a Greek soldier. They were they were the uh, followers of Achilles. Okay. And is there a same similar root word? I don't think so. Oh, really? Like, it's just two independent murmur whatevers? Well, because well, also the spelling's different. The, oh, is it? The uh, the, the Myrmidons is M O Y R, mm -hmm. the uh, et cetera, et cetera. Whereas the, uh, whereas the, uh, 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 Myrmilon is a M U R. And gotcha. So, yeah, different, different etymology. Okay. Well, that are, makes a lot more sense. So I know Rome like to borrow from. I have a gladiator here who is a. His, this guy's called a Hoplomachus, and he's dressed like a Greek. Sort of, but he's got the uh, like Greeks the Greve style armor. He's got a big crested helmet, a spear. All his limbs are covered in armor, and he has this little round uh, uh, shield. Certainly not as big like a, as a Hoplon, but still, everything about him says Greek. Because you know, the, uh, the the Romans like to dress their gladiators after people who had been conquered or colonized, which is why you'd have like the, some of the the velets would actually be dressed like Gauls. Gotcha. Well, which also meant that you know when they got you know beaten in the ring, it it looked good for the empire. <laughs> it's like look at them, I can beat this. So guy. they would be. Uh, well, it says that we have a lost feed. Hey, Joe. It says we're getting lost feed error. <clears throat> I didn't know this would turn into gladiator. <laughs> well, you're working on gladiator, so. Well, what's that in the box? Mom, Hawk. Cool. Oh. says it's back. Hello, we're back. We're double checking to make sure that's not on our, our side, guys, so bear with us, please. Now, that, you know, I'm only, I'm not only just going to be working on uh, gladiators, I'm going to be working on our, your friend and mine. <laughs> it's Nazgar stink mullet. Yes. It's Nazgar to his friend. No one Mr. Would... Stink mullet to his enemies. <laughs> No, Mr. Stink Mullet mother, was his father. <laughs> uh, please no. introduce him like that. <laughs> no, the, uh, and of course he'll be a far different thing because he'll be plastic. 
plastic multi-part as opposed to these metal single. It is a blessing and a curse with plastic multi-part. Yeah. Yeah, let me kind of clean up my surface here and get all this metal shaving yeah. out. Yeah. Uh, Stink Mullet is one of the new characters to uh, Age of Sigmar. He is a goblin. He's actually the first new goblin model that we've seen since the beginning of Age of Sigmar. Because I don't count the spiderlings. Yeah, they're the closest thing, but yeah, they don't seem to actually have any place in Sigmar itself. So. Correct. At least currently. Right. I'm going to be right back. Wash my hands. So yeah, uh, Sean's taking a quick break to to wash up before moving on to that fancy new mullet model um, and you guys will hopefully get to see it uh, at least the beginning of it nice. I'm pretty excited about it. thanks Alexis still long long way coming five five nights we'll we'll do that yeah who are they for uh, Bobby um, he's one of the tournament organizers. He does the Age of Sigmar stuff. So. Okay. So, look at all these wonderful bits. Nope, no wonderful bits. You're mistaken. It's, it's not, nothing but wonderful bits. So, good old uh, Snazgar here is covered in mushrooms, random fungus, and then he has two separate centipedes, <coughs> which is good. And. This little guy, who's my favorite right here, the, his little spore squig. I know why you like mushrooms. Because you you're out. a fun guy. Oh. oh. Ah. Right, right. There we go. Can't believe you didn't see that one coming. <laughs> Sometimes no. you walk right into it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that one was really obvious. That's why I missed it. It was too good. <laughs> it was too obvious. Okay. Can I... Can I use your flipper stand? Yeah, absolutely. Whew. Okay, so. I'll be right. Luckily, they give us nice instructions because he's got a lot of, like, parts that hook into other parts. And yeah, uh, especially with the new Games Workshop Plastics, I always recommend uh, reading the instructions just because of how they cut the molds now. Right. It is, like, laser cut to precision in terms of, like, piece... Uh, per piece. It's no longer like ball and socket joints like it used to be back in the day. Or, or big flat areas. Right. So, uh, follow the instructions. My roommate picked up the new Draka and instead of following the instructions, he clipped out every single piece threw it in a pile and oh, then... Oh no! <laughs> and there were some parts that didn't go in particular... Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, he eventually figured it out except for the insect swarms on her arms. Which uh, Mark was able to help fix. Yeah, good old Draka, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, well, Draka has tons of little bits. This guy has much fewer parts. I'm gonna need a bunch of these guys. Yeah, Who's that? Skyfires? Oh, Zinchi stuff. For, uh, for 40k, right? Oh, absolutely. But hey, you never know. I could try Age of Sigmar at some yeah, point. Yeah, hey, because you, you'll have the models. I'll have the models. Yeah. I, just, I just love the fact that, you know, it's 40K, and they brought back our models armed with bows. Yes. They're magic bows. I know. They are magic bows. <coughs> but still, just like... Uh, I got a list that's... That I, yeah, I, I finally settled on a list. That oh, I really good. Like. It's I remember, Magnus. I remember Armand. back in uh, Rogue Trader era... 40k where bows actually gave yeah. you a, a positive armor save. <laughs> <laughs> so Magnus, Armand, and then Zangors? Uh, Nothing but Zangors? Three units of nine of these guys. Nice. Uh, and then a demon detachment with two heralds on discs. Um, two units of ten brimstones. A big block of 30 pink horrors. Nice. And two units of six flamers. Oh wow. That's uh, that's a lot of stuff. It's it's a lot of stuff. It's super shooty. I'm thinking. It's a, it, it uh, look, to me, just looking at it, it'll be super shooty. Yeah. I mean, well, like no one's, no one's going to turn to Zinch for their great combat prowess. I mean, huh? No, no, one turns no, no, to, no, no. Yeah. It's like shoot no stuff. combat prowess until Magnus is munching on your face. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> now the downside of these, uh, one of the downsides of these precision cut is that sometimes the uh, sprue posts. 
are inside of a curve. Oh. <laughs> so you have to kind of cut around a corner. Yeah, those yep. are... Those suck. So, like, okay, yeah. so if anyone else is putting this together, stumbling block one. <laughs> or when um, a sprue post is connected to a very, very flimsy part, and just trying to cut it off is almost going to snap off the part. Yeah, yeah. Bad idea. The worst is sometimes the part is so so thin and feeble that it looked like a sprue post, so you cut it. <laughs> yeah. You're like, where did that where did that little bone go? Oh, it's still on the sprue because I cut it. Great. <laughs> but overall, yeah, I think once again, it's a very very clean. Okay, next up is his the main body. So at least I get to start with the main body. Here's something interesting for those who, who, who are also putting together. His face is its own bit. So, uh, you know, it fits in this little slot here on the body, but if you are so inclined, you can use a different face. I plan on using a face because it has a lot of character, but still. Yeah. So much detail. Okay. No questions, just a couple people watching. Me trying to figure out where uh, I dropped some stuff earlier. <laughs> Tiny bits? Tiny bits. <laughs> to the floor gods. You dropped a great thing onto a great floor? Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, no, it's like the, the missile launcher carapaces. No, I didn't put them on. I don't know yeah. how many things live in my carpet under my... Uh, Paint yeah. desk at home. Wait a second. It was everything that Mark was work, going to work on. Maybe he took the stuff to see if he could start magnetizing it. I want to go check on that real quick. Sean, keep it going. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm uh, kind of I'm following the. Uh, usually, when you're working on plastic, you can find one end of the uh, one end <clears throat> of the. <clears throat> Sorry, of the cast line, and just follow it all. You know the full circumference of the figure, and uh, you can get all the mold lines. Because again, nothing's worse than finding the mold line when you're well into a figure. That can be very annoying. Now is this? Was, you're working on the? I'm working on the shaman. Shaman. Ah. Good old. This is the. Uh, Squid Shaman. Oh. I'm back. Yay. Hooray me. Yeah. And you are? <laughs> who, who am I? Who, who is any of us, really? No, well, weird. I'm, well, All I'm those Sean, bits. so I'm not sure what your problem is. <laughs> All those bits I was working on before have seemed to have walked off. They're not inside something. Right? I'm sure they're going to pop up somewhere. What, what bits were they? It's the nature of it. Uh, so, the thermal cannons, the, and the missile launchers. Wait, I saw those. those no. I mean, yeah, there, I there's saw more than the ones in there? In that box? Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. The search continues. So, he's got one egregious kind of burr right in the middle of his, right in the top of his head, but, uh, that's what piles are for. <laughs> okay. Queens. Early 90s CG Gary Oldman. He's the one true god. This was late 90s. The guys didn't end up so well, did they? I forgot the map Let me see. Okay. So, uh, just kind of going through and cleaning up, cleaning up edges, cleaning up the mold lines. Especially on a character, you want to be thorough. 
And this is the rare figure who's for me. This is actually for myself. So. Now, is it now? What, so, if I'm doing this and I actually chip off too much, like chip into into the model, is it like you, know, you just paint over it and such? It depends on the nature. You know, how badly did you do it? Okay. If it's a little nick, you might be able to uh, take some like liquid green stuff, mm -hmm. or even like certain types of glue can just en enough glue will just kind of fill it in, and then once that's dry, you can kind of sand it again smooth. Uh, and uh, you know, or if, but usually, you know, green stuff is kind of your your fix all. Uh, now, do you sand the green stuff too? Yeah, once that's dry, it's it's like plastic. Okay. So you can. You, it also depends on the consistency. If you if you uh, mixed, if your mix was right, then it'll it'll dry as you know, hard as plastic, and you won't have any trouble. So there we go. We got a bit attached to another bit. So there you go. What what John was mentioning about the you know, very complete solid attachment. The seam is almost invisible. Almost, of course, but close enough. Luckily, he's going to be wearing black robes, so it's not going to be as visible. But that's done. Next part is his back and left uh, left arm. So a specific order you cut things out on? Uh, well, yeah, the, at least for this one, because it's got a rather you know nicely detailed assembly instructions. Okay. And you effectively have a part that hits locks them apart, and the next part overlays both of those. Okay. So yeah, I, I could have put his back on before I put on his lower half of his body because the back kind of overhangs it and hides the joint. Okay. So definitely read your instructions. Right. Just Sorry, like Legos. Uh, not around like this. Sitting right there. I don't play it myself. John's back again. Possibly, maybe. Maybe. Okay. Oh. I don't want to say anything for certain. And he's going away again. Could have have been been right over here, Joey. <laughs> Shoo. 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 Yeah. Okay. It could have been a dream the whole time. <laughs> it's always stream like with me. Will, how about that Kador? Duh. 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 You know I have Kador now, right? He's a good choice. They would want you to have Kador. He's the only faction that matters. Everyone else is will be. I don't know. They don't have robot zombies. <laughs> they don't have met robot zombies. So inferior. <laughs> Which is a blessing and a curse. Yeah. I can't think of a single way that it's a blessing. You lack robot zombies. Uh, it lets them have overly armored man of wars. That's true. They do have man of wars who ride on armored horses. Yes. Uh, and yeah. now, coming out soon, man of wars being pulled by armored horses. That's right. Like, a, Is it like a chariot or something? Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, two different chariots that are coming out. Uh, a siege and a strike chariot. <laughs> the strike chariot has a ranged 8 power 20 shot. I see. <laughs> Because, you know, is, is Russia. <laughs> so they put an entire month's payload of ammunition into a single shell and uh, hope they hit it. Well, there are certain weapons that you don't have to hit it. You just have to hit near it. <laughs> well, so this one you have to hit directly. But if you hit directly, it slams it back D6 inches. I see. Yeah. It's good. It's, it's, it's it, a good model. Does it have a template or is it just a single shell? No, it's just a single It's okay. a single shell. Okay. So it either hits you or it doesn't. Okay. That, that, that's, that answers that question. So it's Rat 5, so it's only supposed to be targeting like the slow-moving heavy stuff. Well, usually, yeah, you're not going to use this. You're not going to use that cannon against an infantry. Yeah, man. I think it's supposed to crack open walls and things like that. Or, you know, war jacks. Right. Okay. Just kind of going over any so any uh, burrs with the, the file here. Okay, what's left? Do, 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 do. So yeah, treat. My advice when you're doing cleaning is treat it as a game. Just you want to hit you want to hit all your uh, all your points.
Okay, next part's done. There's his back. Maybe it's both the same. Uh, what's left? See, at this point, what's all that's left to build on his, on his body itself is his head and his uh, staff arm, which I might leave separately just to make it easier to paint. Yeah, uh, it, it is a good idea, like, especially when you guys are going and building, like, plastic models, is paying attention to sub-assemblies. So, not every time, but a lot of times you can find an easier way by not gluing the entire model together. Right. Yeah, like, I'm going to leave off his arm, his arm and his face, until later, because at the moment, well, maybe the face, I might attach the face, but the arm will just, you know, it'll be easier to paint it in the round, yeah. and it won't, it won't block off part, you know, other parts of his body. So I can, uh, so I'm working on his base now, which uh, nice. It even has like another species of slime. <laughs> Delicious. This is like slime molds dripping off the rock. Loads of fun. Now I have a uh, I have a Moon Clan army, so this guy's uh, will really be useful. Though luckily his power, his uh, command ability, can also be used on orcs. It's just. Uh, as far as let me see, is that how it is? Do, 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 do. Yes. Now imagine, uh, imagine uh, uh, Iron Jaw's brutes allowed to retreat from combat and then charge again. Yeah, seems pretty good. Or uh, Gorgrunta's. Because don't they get a bonus if they charge? They. they so Gorgrunta's. Right. Sorry. Um, oh. They. Uh, I don't use them myself, so... <laughs> yeah, so Gorgonzers receive the bonus if the furthest enemy away is is 8 inches. So you can't just say, like, alright, you're 3 inches away with that guy and 8 inches away with that guy, and yeah. I rolled high, so I'm going to go the other direction. Uh, you, you don't get the bonus if they any enemy is less than 8 inches yeah, they, away. they need momentum. Weirdly yeah, enough, right. they're the only cavalry that needs momentum. <laughs> no one else needs momentum. No. Really. No, I definitely think Iron Jaws need a reward. They yeah. Just, well, they'll probably get it. Mark. Yeah. Did you fix it? Uh, no. One of them is just wrong polarity. Oh, do you need me to fix it? Uh, it's this guy. This guy's the wrong polarity. Oh, so you just like, can't, can only have that? Yeah. So there's one more of the stub guns that I need to find, but he'll be fine. All right. There'll just be one that is not like yeah. the others. Yeah. So but it'll be exclusive to that model. Correct. Which is fine. Yeah. Okay. Here's the thing to here another thing to for folks to remember when you're building figures. Put effort into your base. <laughs> yeah. Get rid of any any flash and and spurs on that. I see too many figures where everything's you know, figures all done clean, then they put them on a base with this like chunk of plastic sticking out. Don't do that. That's another thing to watch watch out for. So I'm going to go ahead and glue together his body components. Uh, let me just remind myself, okay. So long you've been playing Goblin Chant. Uh, geez. Um, I started the Goblin Army in fifth edition. Though mostly it was the supplements to my Orc Army. Yeah. Primarily it was an Orc Army, and then you know, but it's easy to collect enough goblins that then when Age Sigmar came along and with with actually the much smaller armies. Yeah. I mean. The amount of goblins I have in my Age of Sigmar army would be a third of an army of goblins in the old, under the old system. Yeah. So weirdly enough, yeah, you actually need way, way fewer models to do with Sigmar. But, uh, you know. That's good, though. Yeah, thanks. Okay, next. What you working on today, Jesse? Sigmar? 
maybe. Maybe. Yes. Uh, I guess I should build King Drew when he's in this weekend. I guess so. Don't forget to put that X Wing on him. Exactly. Just use the X Wing as my calamity marker. Yeah. <laughs> what? It's a dinosaur. What? It's X Wing. <laughs> No, the dinosaur's arcane shield, the x Wing's calamity, get it right. Uh, this three-year-old Skittle is, uh, some other upkeep. Yeah, it's yeah. just some, uh, it's a thing. Yeah. It's aiming. Okay, and there's his, there's his, uh, there his, there's his body built, including his left arm. And I'm going to go ahead and put him on the base. Luckily, his foot slots right into, because rolled on the base are his, are the toes of his left foot. So there's, there's no question of how he's going to attach to the base. So we're going to do that. Okay, a little bit of pressure and oh man he's he's coming together quick yeah i mean he, he you know compared to other characters he's uh he's got a lot of he doesn't have too many parts are you going to glue the uh, squig onto the base or paint that separately i'll paint that separately the little squig his little squig hound is a separate bit and luckily it doesn't even have a slot so it can fit anywhere on a the flat part of the base which is um you know right there since so you can make room, so. But I'm going to paint that one separately, so I can make sure to get painted fully in the round. Let me see. This is where I'm trying to figure out best placement. I, yeah, just, for those of you who have acute hearing, uh, Boss Baby is on in the background, and I'm slightly taken aback on how this movie actually got made. Well, I can see how it was made. I, I mean, okay, and there he is. It's mounted. With enough room. Okay, he's, he's a, at this point, he's done enough for me to prime him. I might actually go into the base and add the... Uh, Did you glue the uh, face on? Not yet. No. I'm trying to decide if I if the face will get in the way or not. It might get in the way. Eh, it'll be fine. Actually, I'm looking at it. He will get in the way because his chin spike actually go, juts out and he's got detail on his chest. Oh, gotcha. Got this detail. And let's see. There's my little squig. Let's get him off and see where he's going to fit. Squig. He's effectively an ambulatory potato. Uh, at least that's the design. <laughs> oh. What's the best word again? Gilliman. Ambulatory potato. G-U-L-L. No, G-U-I. L-L. I-M-A-N. Okay. Capital G. him separately but there he is he little little guy that will fit on the base just fine oh nice yeah, you didn't even have to glue him on there right well let's see. let me see that face now the face does kind of lock into the into the uh, mushroom there's a little part of that but again if you want to have, do a face swap you can easily green stuff his face into the mushroom itself yeah for those who don't know the uh, the background this guy has snorted so many mushrooms that his head has actually exploded into a mushroom. It's not technically a hat. That is what his brain is now. <laughs> it's a mushroom. Right, that big thing right there is not a sombrero. It's not a sun hat. It's a, that's his head. 
What a gorgeous model. What uh, species of fungi is it? <laughs> you got me. Uh, death caps, I think is what they, they call it. Death caps? Yeah, death caps. Okay. Well, that's specifically the ones that the fanatics uh, yeah. eat. Yeah. I don't know. He, he seems to have several different species. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go in and cut the face out to see how it fits. I'd per, definitely, yeah. I, would, I would prefer it so that it's you know attached before I start painting. So I have some cork and pins if you wanted to mount it. Oh yeah, that's a good idea. I'll see if. Uh... I usually find it easier to. Yep, yep. Glue it into a. Uh... Like drill it in, glue it to a, uh, a a little post so you can paint it at your leisure. All right, good news. His head doesn't get in the way of detail. Oh, good. So I can go ahead and attach. So it. one less sub assembly to do. Right. Sub assembly, risk painting, all that stuff. Oh, there is a mold line, and that's a persistent one too. Get rid yeah. of it. Yeah. Got a mold line right down the middle of his nose, but fix it. Okay, it's fixed. Any, has anyone had any uh, problems with plastic models? I mean, different different uh, things to worry about when you plastic over metal. Yeah. Luckily, plastic plastic is so much more forgiving. Get in there. Get in there. Get in there. Thank you. And there it is. Voila. Voila. Look at that face. Look at that face. <laughs> what a, what a profile. He's so just, handsome. Yeah, he has to use, use a stick to fight the women. <laughs> yeah, and he's got one too. Oh yeah. It's, it's, it's got bugs on it to help yes. him out even more. Yes, this, this man has two centipedes on him. Yeah. And he, yes, he has a, yes, he has a wonderful metal nose with a uh, nose with air holes. Yeah. We can imagine he's, uh, Gotta get the red pepper hummus, Kevin.